do. Right, so something a bit different on this video. Uh, we've come away with doing a little round trip around the UK. So I thought I'd pop in and see a few people. We're going to see Baz Meredith tomorrow. Um, so I wanted to pop in and see Dean. Big, been a friend of mine since we sort of started the channel. So this is DC Lomas. This is Dean Lomas. Neurodivergent Look, mechanic. I've got my QR code. So what we need to do, try and get him up to his thousand subscribers from this video. <laughs> How many are you up to now? 920. Here we go. We've got to get 80, view, 80 subscribers on his channel by the end of this video. I'll tell you what I'll do. If the person who gives me the 1,000th subscriber, yeah. I'll get one of my jump, my T-shirt logos up and I'll send it to him. They want one of mine, mate, not one of yours. No, yeah, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll, I'll send you one of Bob's shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if we can get to 1,000 subscribers. So, neurodivergent mechanic. So, I popped up to see him and he has said he's got an Audi A5 with an ad blue fault. I don't do add blue, as you know, but it looks like it's going to be a control module voltage fault. So we're going to have a look at it and show you in the way we sort of do stuff and hopefully it'll work, eh? Yeah. I mean, I love this add blue stuff. I like I like a, sh a diesel. I was going to swear then. I don't like them. Do, but do I don't you... like, I don't think DPFs do your business any good. No. Right. They give you a bad the, reputation. The, the SCRs and the add blues and the NOx and the EJRs and all that is a bad idea, but we do that many of them, mm -hmm. it churns the numbers. And that's really, it's great that we can work on them and diagnose them. And we, so we probably do 15 dags a week on diesels. So how much do you drum into the customer that something else is gonna go wrong six months down the line? Every time. And we're gonna charge 1,500 pound now. Every single and job. And there's a good chance the light's gonna come yeah. back on. And do you know what we tell them? Buy a petrol Hyundai or a Kia. Really? Yeah, yeah. every yeah. customer, get rid of your car, you don't do the mileage. And I say to them, right, what, what we need to do is get you to go to the fuel station and put premium fuel in. If you don't put premium fuel in, you're feeding your kids McDonald's for breakfast, dinner and tea. Yeah. And that's the problem. They're having bad fuel, cheap fuel put in. It needs to be clean and it's not clean and they're not running them hot. These yeah. have to be run hot. They have to do a 30 mile journey at least yeah. twice a week yeah. to, to, build the, to break, break the carbon down. And if they don't break the carbon down, it just sits and it just festers and grows. Yeah. I suppose if you've got a customer base which you, they trust you anyway, yeah. they'll come to me as a specific job. So I've got a light on on my dash. I'll charge them a load of money to yeah. fix it and it comes back on. Uh, there's a local fellow to us, he's part of DPF Doctor and yeah. he'd done everything to it and it was all fine. Six months later, the bloke's gone back kicking off going, it's definitely down to you. The mouse had a load of wiring on it, you know, and he still couldn't get into his head. Do you know it what was I the say, same light. Do you know what I say to the customers of that? I said, if I'm driving your car for 90,000 miles, I'll pay for the repair. Mm. But because you're not treating your car properly, you've got to pay for it. I'm quite blunt with them. There's some people. As long as you are blunt, yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. good. So, so, so we're going to have a look into this. Hopefully, like I said, I think it's an electrical fault, not an ad blue or you know sensor fault or anything like that. So we're going to get plugged in. We'll have a look. Eh? Do they have fuses on them? Probably. I'm going to go check a fuse. <laughs> right, let's get into it. <laughs> so obviously, first thing we're going to do is plug it in with the Think Car. Um, Three nine one. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, it was the first one in the UK, you know. Really? Yeah. Um, after speaking to you and a couple of others, I found up Alex. Yep. At Impact, Impact Diagnostic. Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm looking for a Diag. Um, what's 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 around? What's quick and easy? Yep. I said, because I'm only a simple lad. You know, I still eat the crayons. Uh, <laughs> so he said, um, I'm getting a Think Car one next week, uh, the 391, and you can be the first in the UK to get one. I'd find it good. It's quite easy. Yeah. But I've always favoured towards my snap-on because when I first went on my own mobile, yeah. I was on my van and it was a Bluetooth module yeah. and it was it was quite easy. But I found it simple enough for me to use, which is great. And now you snap on and just use a wheel chop, do you? Because it's all really good for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I um, I use it to put my brew on. <laughs> it's all really good for <laughs> So we're getting a plug-in. And what codes have we got? Uh, P21CA00. Which is? A reductant control module supply voltage. I told you we're going to check the fuses. Can I check it with a live wire just to like, pew. No, we'll do it properly. That's why I'm a mechanic, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. So it looks like we've got a control module fault, uh, control module voltage fault. So we're going to go through, again, so a lot of people now will go through technical service bulletins, look at this and that, and let's get some proper data. Let's find out what's going on. Um, get a wiring diagram up, because that is, people get too involved in technical service bulletins and everything like that. They're good we want some data before we do it. So we're going to go and look at the wiring diagrams, see if they're separately fused, because the module's obviously turning on, so we can talk to the control module, so we know we're getting some supply to it, but what is the difference? So let's have a look. 
Um, in fact, we'll go for some live data first, see if that shows anything. Live data? Yeah. So I can go on air and go on a data stream? Yep. <laughs> so if we scroll down. There, two seconds. Right, let's show you this. Terminal 30 voltage. Oh, sugar. Wait, I press buttons, Bob. Bob, I've pressed buttons. What have you done? I don't know. There you go. There we go. So we've got terminal 30A, which is normal battery voltage, and terminal 30B. One's at 11.79 volts, one's at zero volts. So we have lost a voltage to the control module. Is that a fuse then, Bob? Yeah. Could be fuse, could be wiring. No, more than likely, the module's probably underneath the car. Good chance it's I'm corroded go... wire. As we haven't got a lot of time, I'm going to go through the wiring diagrams, find out what we're meant to have where on the um, straight to the control module. Dean's just checking the fuses with all data, trying to find the fuse location. Sometimes it is bang on, sometimes it's hard to find. So he's going through his Haynes Pro. He's going to check all the fuses in the, the main fuse box, and we're going to check what wiring diagrams we need. Oh, we're going to check the wiring diagrams, find out what we're meant to have where, and then we can get to the module if we don't find a blown fuse. So right, I'm going to let him do that. I'm going to look at this and see what we can find. So we have got, this is you, your AdBlue control module. These are your fuses and it has got two main fuses powering up that control module. So we've got pin one and pin 30. So Dean's just checking these fuses through. He's finding out locations because the location diagram, which normally is over here to tell you exactly where it is, is not listed and it's easier to go through either Haynes Pro or Autodata, try and find out where they are. But he's doing that. And then if it hasn't got a blown fuse, we're gonna go straight down to the control module and find out what voltages we got there. Bob, Ooh. got a bit of a problem. What? The fuses aren't in the right places. Are they not? No. So what's wrong? Is right. it? No, like there's, there's a whole chunk of fuses not in the right places. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Bob's, Bob's there. I'm just saying, Bob, look, these fuses are meant to be in that gap there. Yeah. But there's a whole tray of fuses missing. Okay. So, again, this is sort of what we come across a lot, is the fuse locations don't line up from one to another or to the car. They've only got to change where they put the fuses. And unless they've updated the data, you sometimes struggle. That's why I normally go to the module first if I can. If it's not a massive strip out, yeah. Just go straight to it. You haven't got to search for fuses. See if you're on the right one or the wrong one. Confuse yourself. If we can get straight to the control module, we'll know, won't we? Yeah, because there's just no, there's the, the right fuses. It says here, yeah, let me come to your camera. But it says, I don't know whether you can see, it's saying the fuse should be SF3. Down there, the whole rail of fuses is missing. Yeah. So, no, so it, it, they must have, Change the, change the location of that. They can do, I mean, so all data is um, manufacturer-specific data. Yeah. But if for some reason it hasn't picked up the right year or something like that, or they haven't found a change on a change over year, sometimes it's not 100%. So, so let's go to the module. Module first. Module first. Right, let's find out where that is. So we've gone on to all data again. It has shown where the control module is. It is underneath the right rear panel Looks like it's bolted to the AdBlue tank, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does so look a bit As long as it's straight AdBlue. underneath instead of on top of it, we should be able to get to that. I've just gone on test. that and it said that the AdBlue control module is in the boot. What does? Hayes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've well, looked. it's towards the boot, isn't it? Well, oh, it's just saying here. What? So it's saying the AdBlue control module is That there. area doesn't say inside the boot, does it? Hmm. That could be roof lining, boot, Fuel underneath tank area. anything, couldn't it? So it's just showing the area, but not exactly where. Nice. So this is why we have to pay for all data. Yeah. Because it is the OE. You need two or three. Yeah. So, right. We're going to get that panel out of the bottom. I'm going to send and it. Have a look. Go on and get it up. Come on, Bob. Bend over. I mean, get in. Get in. Right. We found it. It's under there. It's corroded quite badly. So Looks like it's been in the sea, Bob. The module. But there are signs of rubs on the wiring loom, nothing special. Let's just give you a quick show over that. These bits. Yeah, I mean, that could have rubbed through. That Jaguar done. Um, you know, it's just little bits like that make you worry. But 
also. But this isn't connected here. Uh, yeah, this loom bit, so that could have rubbed through. Could have done a number of things. But that's obviously looking a bit rough as well. Let's get that plug off. We'll test the main two lives in, main two earths in. We know what pins they are, one in 30. And then we can... Is it okay unplugging these without it, um, with it being still thinking? Live, it's not going to trip anything out. Nah, it'll be fine. Good job, fine. you know what you're doing, Bob. <laughs> right, so we've got earth down this end. Two earths, two lives. So we're just going to earth on that, earth on that, live on that, live on that. So we don't need to find them fuses now, do we? No. Because we know we've got our powers anyway. Yeah. So if we'd have gone to wear furs instead of farting about with Haynes and looking for fuses. So you go straight to it. We try and, and go. now we'll load test it to check it. Yeah, got to load test it because again, if, if any of this is corroded through, it will show it on there because this takes nothing to put 12 volts to. Yeah. But to power a bulb, obviously, it takes a certain amount of current. So, right. Here's one so, I made earlier, Bob. 21 watt bulb into the earth. If you make some more up, do them with power probe leads on the end, and then you can use, change the connections over, can you? You like that idea? Do you know you? what I bought a multi box off like eBay? I think it was like 160 wires in it. And where's that? You lost it's in, no, 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 it's in there. Brand new box. I, I, I'm very careful with it. Cost me like, no, no. Yeah, I'm doing. Oh, that's so, bright, Bob. So like what? me. <laughs> oh, you're bright. <laughs> oh, bright, mate. So we know that, uh, well, one earth, one yeah. live is good. Move over to the next live. That one's good. Yeah. But you've got to move it over to the next earth as well, in case it's the earth what's breaking So you've got to check down. both wires all the way through. Yeah. So what if you put positive to positive, Bob? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. Positive positive is fine, earth to earth is fine. It's like touching them two wires just to the battery terminal. Well, it's not going to send a feed up the other one. No. If you had a fault on it, you would. Um, yes. So unless you know what it is, but because they're going both to the same, both, both of the same fuse and yeah. back to the same feed, it'll be okay. Okay. But, uh, so, we got our main lives on a terminal 30s, and it's a terminal 30 what's showing in the full one, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So, we might as well pull that module off, because it's ganky. I've got my gun ready. And get it open. Let's, let's, uh, let's split it. Yeah, you know, I usually bend out. everything when, when I take them apart. Oh, so, Jesus. I'll let you do that, Bob. Oh, all the bits falling off it. So, we've sprayed a lot of brake cleaner over the back of the ECU area and it's it's softened up all the sealant because you just use big screwdrivers there until it comes oh, off. Oh man, I pry bars, chisels, any, anything you, you, you want to get that back cover yeah. off. So we've taken that is... apart and we have seen <gasps> little bits of corrosion. Yeah, but have you seen the stuff what's come out of it? Look, that, that's come off it. Ooh. So, let's just show you. Hopefully we'll get a zoom in on it. So down this side here, go on, go on, zoom, Bob. There you go. Oh, oh, there it is. You can see it. Look at that. Right on there. Yeah. There's a pin corroded away. So that's a signal to say that it's got the voltage down. So that's, that's your main live in. Yeah. Comes down here, goes through some bits, and this bit is faulty. So. So that's your signal, more or less. So that's that module has probably got all the voltages into it to allow everything to work. Yeah. But the bit what picks up the fault code to say that it's got the voltage in, to send it out to a processor or whatever it does, I don't yeah. know too much about it, could just be that fault there. But if you manage to get a repair on that, is it going to last? No, because it's got corrosion all down yeah. the side of it. And then the next thing will corrode, next thing will corrode, and again, the customer will be back, won't they? Yeah. So. And this car's been a problem before. So I was telling, telling Bob about this vehicle. It came in late last year, early this year. So, so six months ago, about, about that six months ago. Um, he kept on getting a warning light on his dash uh, about braking, braking warning light. Yeah. And he kept on ignoring it, kept on ignoring it. And what happened was his pressure sensor on his master cylinder had failed. But it kept on signaling to the ABS pump. I failed, I failed, I failed until it timed out on the ABS pump and he had to have a new ABS pump because it recognised the fault what wasn't being repaired. Oh, too many times. Too many times. So BMWs do that, or if you get short circuit detection on BMW, yeah. if the bulb shorts out, it flags up, turns the light off. Yeah. After a certain amount of times, that's it. 
it'll go, right, it's got a short, and we're not turning it back on again. Even if you get remove the short and that sort of really? stuff. So what do you do? We have to reflash the car? Yeah, you go into the mod Full body control sub, module and tell it that it's... Update. Yeah, it has not wow. got it. So you, you, there is certain bits of kit just for short circuit detection removal. And I think God does do it, actually. Really? Yeah, you can go into it and just remove short In circuit. In that machine? Yeah. That's like my second T Coasty. See? <laughs> Mad. So yeah. So, so what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do with this? It's Bob? just gonna need a new one. There's no point in mucking about. They're eight, they're eight hundred quid, Bob. Ain't my money. No, it's not. And guess what? No. I ain't drove it for seventy-four thousand miles either. No. So if it was my car and I drove <laughs> it for seventy-four thousand miles, it would be my pleasure to pay for it. Exactly. So. Can I take it apart? You can do. We'll get a bit further apart, but. Nice. Oh dear, he's gonna break some more stuff. Wait, so, it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> so go check out Dean's stuff, new Odovergy mechanic. I will stick a link down below. Just a quick one while we was up here. Thought we'd do a little video on it. Hope you like it. Check out his channel. Go oh, check out the channel. Check out his channel. Even got a QR code. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.